Hey guys, Mike from MasterMix.com, and in this video, I want to talk to you about making your own drum samples so that you can use them to enhance or to replace drums in your mixes. Now, there's a number of advantages in recording your own drum samples, and the first is that you get clean hits of the drums used in the sessions without any cymbal bleed or any other noise that's in the background. Now, this is going to come in handy a lot in the mixing stage because you can ride up a fader of just a clean sample and not have to worry about the cymbals poking through or any of that stuff. So you can get some extra volume. I'll show you all about that in a couple minutes. Another advantage of making your own samples is that you don't have to fight any issues with tuning. So oftentimes you'll listen to recordings and you can sometimes hear that they clearly added a sample because the sample has a resonant frequency on its own and then in the background and perhaps the overheads you can hear this other frequency kind of looming there from the original drums. And you want to avoid that as much as possible because then it just makes your drums sound like they're fake. So by using samples that were made with the original drummer's kit you can avoid that problem. And lastly, another great reason to make your own samples is just to build up your own sample library. Building your own sample library is extremely helpful for situations where you need to replace a drum or enhance a drum. So for example, maybe you've been recording a drummer who has a maple snare that's just, just not cutting it in your mix. Well, maybe you think a Black Beauty sound would be better. Well, if you've recorded a Black Beauty before and you've got a sample of it, you could easily fly in that sample and replace that maple drum that isn't working for you. So now let's talk about the process for recording your own drum samples. So one of the first things I like to do is every time I set up the drums, I got them all mic'd up, all my levels right, and everything's all tuned, is get the drummer to play a couple hits of various intensities. So I'll get them to play a few loud hits, a few medium hits, and a few quiet hits. And this will help you in the mixing stage if you need to replace either a loud, medium, or quiet hit. So you can see in this session here that right here are some snare hits that I took. We got some loud hits. He starts to get a little more medium there, a little quieter. He also did a couple more loud ones after the fact. Same with kick. We've got a variety of those. We've got some tom samples. I even take cymbal samples too. And these are really helpful when you're editing. If you need to fly in a quick hit, perhaps the drummer maybe hit a rim instead of the middle of the drum and you need to quickly replace that. You can easily do that if you've got some samples of the hits. So after the drummer has recorded all of these hits, what I like to do next is I'll go into my mix window and I like to get a balance of the close mics with the room mics. Now the reason why I like to use room mics is because they give you a lot of the body sound in the drum. If you have just a close mic, sometimes you get too much attack, but with the room sounds, the things start to sound a little bit fuller, a little bit fatter, and you get a lot more size and weight out of the drums. So what I did here for snare samples was I, got, I muted the kick, muted the hi-hat and toms. I've also added some processing to the snare just to make sure that we've got a good clean sounding sample. You can add some EQ, compression, whatever you need to make sure that that snare sounds really good. Then what I like to do is I'll get the overheads. I also did some processing on those, adding some EQ and some compression. Let's hear what we've got. Now it's important to note that there's a lot of space between the hits and the reason for that is we want to make sure that we're not cutting off the sustain of the drum. We want the drum to fully ring out. So then after I've got the balance of the mic set up, what I next like to do is I like to analyze the drums and try to find the quietest hits and the loudest hits. And what I like to do is I'll often number them. So in this case, let's zoom in here a little bit. I've numbered them from 1 to 7, 1 being the quietest and 7 being the loudest. I've just added markers right now just to indicate that. And what I like to do is just kind of listen through the tracks, just make sure I've got a good clean sample here. So let's listen. So that first hit, he hit the rim a little bit. That's pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll just try to find loudest and quietest and I'll mark them off. Then what I'll do next is I will do a tab to transient on the hits that I want and then I'll create a selection that's long enough for the drum to fully sustain and ring out to silence before the next hit. So then once I've got my region selected, I simply send the sample to a record channel and record it there. So I've already done that step, but to show you, I've got all of these drum tracks routed to this record channel. I just have to arm this track and hit record and then I can record a region for each snare hit. Then once I've recorded them I simply name the files. 
When I'm naming samples, I like to use the type of drum that I recorded. I also like to use some sort of descriptor to tell me whether the sound is a little more natural sounding, like a blend of overheads with the close mics, or if it's just close mics only, that kind of thing. And then I also like to number them, like I mentioned earlier, from quietest to loudest. So that way when I'm looking through my files, I know exactly what velocity I'm going to get based on the file name. Now you might choose to make your samples a good blend of close mics and room mics. You might choose to make close mic samples only. Or you might decide to crank your room mics and get really roomy drum samples. Whatever you choose is up to you and it helps to have a variety of samples. So here's a drum session that I did for a band that had a pretty heavy sound and it required that the snares were pretty consistent in dynamics in order to cut through the dense guitar mix. And when I was listening to the tracks, I noticed that in the verses, the drummer plays a little bit softer than he does in the chorus. Let's listen to that. Now the chorus. So the chorus definitely has a lot more body on the snare, so I wanted to make sure that I had some of that in the verses as well. Now, the other thing to notice is that when I solo the snare tracks, you'll notice that there's a lot of cymbal bleed happening on the snares. Now, I already tried to get it out, but it's still present in there. So I wasn't able to quite ride the fader as hard as I wanted to, or else I would have all this cymbal bleed coming through. So what I did was, using the snare samples that I made earlier in this video, I imported them, and I just copied and pasted the snares, lined them up with the transients of the snares, and put them all across the song. So this is that Tico Torres snare that I showed you earlier. So now, let's listen to the sample. So now we just have a consistent sample of the snare on every hit. So let's listen to the drums in full without the sample and then I'll bring it in. And now I'll bring in the sample. And so if I wanted, I could ride this snare sample up really loud just to make sure that it's really cutting through the mix. And we're not getting any of that cymbal bleed stuff happening. Once more with it out. So it really helps make the snare sound a lot stronger and like I said earlier, it really helps with the tuning too because we're adding just a sample of the original drum. So we're not getting any different overtones between the sample and the overhead. So this is just one example where you might want to create your own samples in order to fly into your mix sessions. So that's it. If this is your first time hearing about MasterMix.com, please check out the website. At the top of the site, there is a link to download your free copy of the Ultimate Mixing Blueprint. It's a document that I've created that shows you some settings to try with EQ and compression across a variety of different instruments within your mix, and it'll help you drastically with getting your settings quicker and knowing exactly what to look out for within your tracks. Once you've downloaded that, you'll be added to my mailing list, and that's where I send out weekly videos and tips and tricks to try to help you with your mixes. So go ahead and check it out. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you're up to date with all the latest videos, and leave a like or a comment on this video. That's it for now. We'll talk soon.